I even get a couple things. Um, so tonight we're in the, uh, the church era, and technically we're still in the church era. So it's been going on for a long time. And on page 134, has everybody got a book? Mm -hmm. Everybody? Okay, so you got your books. Um, on that page 134, you know how we, we open up and it gives us a couple little things to springboard into the lesson. And uh, it's kind of weird on this one, but it, it, he tells us in the first sentence, a lot of pot shots have been taken at the church over the years. And it gives a bunch of examples. And I'm like, well, why in the world would you open it up with that? You know, people taking shots at the church. And uh, does anybody know what a pot shot is? Yeah, a cheap shot. Cheap yeah. shot. Um, a wise crack. Yeah, or, you know, um, if you're shooting, like if you're like somebody's running down the road and they're like taking a couple pot shots, it's like they're not even aiming, they're just kind of throwing a shot to stare yeah. somebody. <laughs> yeah. That's really a pot shot, you know. It's like you're really not aiming, but it's like bang, 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 get somebody to run it. And um, that's, that's what I thought of. And, but the way he, he comes out, it's like he, he tells us all these different things, the pot shots, and then his his closing statement, he gives it, and he said, well, this is why I did it. In spite of all uh, the imperfections, uh, that it's actually in the last paragraph down at the bottom, in spite of obvious imperfections, because we're all sinners, right. the church is the means that has been chosen to carry the message of the gospel to the world. And so, and, and so this is why we get all, I guess he's trying to say that this is why we get all these pot shots because we're imperfect and we're trying to tell people about Jesus, but yet we're imperfect people. So they, it's easy pickings mm -hmm. from for people to take pot shots. So the number one thing I think we hear is like, oh man, y'all just a bunch of hypocrites down there. And I'm like, ah, you know, hey, we do the best we can, you know. But it's like nobody's perfect and I'm just telling you what God's word says. So it's kind of like we do have to humble ourselves and tell people about the Lord, but it's tough, you know, especially when you got somebody like that. It's like you really can't tell somebody like that a whole lot because they've already got made up in their mind of how people are in the church. So it's, it makes it difficult. But here he tries to bring a little humor to it, I suppose. Go back to that first statement. He says, one scallywag wrote, this guy must be from the 40s or something, right? Scallywag. Scallywag. Hit the bricks, you know, something like that. To, yeah, or some, I don't know. Navy, Navy maybe. Yeah. That's a Navy term. Yeah. Mm. To, uh, to live above with saints we love, oh, that will be glory. To live below with the saints we know, well, that's another story. Because, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all sinners. You know, when we go to meet the Lord, we're going to have that glorified body. When we go, you know, we're going to have a, a new understanding. Yeah, it's going to be different. Um, so it's like, yeah, we're just sinners trying to tell other sinners how to get saved. I mean, it's, you know, we're not anything special. You know, we're righteous because of what Jesus did. He tells us well, that we're the, we are the righteous, but we hadn't seen the fullness of it just yet. The only difference between us and them is that it's the, the Lord. It's the Lord, right? Uh, about halfway down, we know the amazing grace. He says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So... It's kind of like he's trying to say, you know, we're the Pharisees and Sadducees. It's like, man, we're, we're fine, but you're not. So we're going to focus on your problem. And that's just not the way you're supposed to do it. Uh, you know, we get a lot of lip from Holly because of that, right? Oh my yeah, gosh. she's like, and like, uh, y'all so judgmental and this and that. I'm like, no, nah, you know, we're just trying to help, you know. Uh, we try our best, but we still get it. It's bad when your family says, don't tell don't tell people because he'll go off on <laughs> And I'm like, I just tried to tell you. What's right? What's wrong? Yeah, it's like you heading down that road. I'm trying. I'm trying to help you to keep from getting in more trouble. <laughs> they just don't want. And I'm to like, and you just kind of shake your head. Oh, you go off. <laughs> yeah, he'd go off on it. <laughs> if it wasn't for us, though, they'd probably be a lot worse off, though. I mean, if we're, we're telling them the truth, it's like, man. But, you know, that, that bothers me because I don't go off on them. I try to tell them in love. 
Yeah. Right. But, but Brother Tommy, you're telling them what they don't want to hear. Yeah. That's why they're yeah. saying you're you, going You're on. shining the bright light in their face, and they, they yeah. want to stay in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, at least that's the way it is with yeah. our children. Oh, yeah. Boy, really makes you want to give up. Oh, let me tell you, uh, we yeah. was I was over at Caleb's the other day. They had a busted water pipe, and these boys, they think they know what they're doing. <laughs> they glued they, I, it. Let me tell it. Oh, you going to tell it? Yeah, let me tell oh, it. Okay. I was up under there, and I'm looking, and I'm I'm like, all right, I got you fixed up. And I'm like, uh, you got the cleaner and the primer. Where the glue at? It's like, I was in that purple can, and I said, no, no, this is primer. They, <laughs> they gonna, clean. They had, hey man, they had cleaned it and put the primer and put the pipe together thinking that was glue. And I come in there, I started moving it, and the pipe just come off in my hand. I'm like, where's the glue at? Oh, you got it. And I'm like, ain't no glue in here. And they, Bless done, their heart. they done put some other pipes together on the other side of the house and it hadn't got no glue on it. And it, oh. it hadn't busted apart yet. And I was like, well, you got to do that too. Well, we got to do it right now. Uh, yeah. I said, well, you can wait on it to bust. I mean, it'll probably catch you when you got company over, though. <laughs> but anyway, I, I was just like, oh, my goodness. You but see, they not read the can. They know they, everything. They read they the can. They knew they had to put two things on. Yeah, they <laughs> knew one of them was cleaner and the other was glue. They just assumed that that purple one was the glue. And I was like, no. They just don't get it. <laughs> They don't understand. But they are so much smarter and wiser than but here, are. But here's the kicker. We went in there. I'm telling on Caleb now. He'd be, hopefully he won't watch this. You and, better not. I didn't know you was. Don't worry about it. He ain't going to watch it. But anyway, the, the other boy, he, he's supposed to take out the garbage, his roommate. And I walked over there. And then Caleb, he, when he was with us, he took out the garbage. We had to scold him by taking that garbage out every week. Well, uh, we come over there and the boys got garbage flowing out of the garbage can onto the floor and another bag and another box and coke boxes and man it's just everywhere right and I said I said Caleb wonder why he ain't taking it out the boy's standing right there and he's like well you know it's been and, and this is the uh, set he said yeah you know it's been cold out there and this and that I said but you running up and down the road every every, every day you ain't you <laughs> right and then I finally said, I said, Caleb, you know what this reminds me of? I had to give him some scripture, right? I said, this reminds me of that in Proverbs. He said, the reason he ain't going to work because there's lines out in the street. And he said, he can't do it because of the lines was in the street. He had to stay in the house. And Caleb said, oh, no, Dad done broke out the word on you now. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? That guard was still sitting there probably. Oh, my goodness. I said, man, a lot. They don't realize, you know, that's the thing. They can smell oh. like your house, but they can get in there. They don't smell it. Yeah. Oh. I said, you're going to have mice. My... You walk in, no, we but, don't Yeah, we can let anybody. Yeah, we're going to. I said, I, said okay. I, I, t I finally just said, look, I'm not living here. <coughs> I don't have to look at it. I said that. I said, mm. But see, Caleb, he getting a double dose of not taking the garbage out from back in the day. So I, yeah, it tickled That's me. Come up and, it tickled me to see it, though. All right, here. All right, let's get back to the lesson. He also wrote a little bit further down. Uh, William Blake wrote in the Everlasting Gospel. He said, both read the Bible day and night, but thou readest black where I read white. Now, you know how people will... You know, they, they come up with some other thing, and it's like, no, nah, it's right here, you know. And I've had people do me like that or tell me, no, nah, that ain't what it means. It's this, this. I said, dude, it's, it's right there. It's black and white. I mean, how, how can you get around that? Um, so many examples of that. And I, I actually saw it online the other day, one of the most misquoted verses, and somebody said, money is truly the root of all evil. And I was like, man, how many times y'all have to be told that that's incorrect? It's the love of money. Yeah. And I, I finally just like, I, I'm not wasting my breath. Can't, I mean, it just, I'm like, whatever. You know, they just going to keep doing that. Uh, but anyway, in spite of obvious imperfection, the church is the means that has been chosen to carry out the message of the gospel to the world. And he gives us the Holy Spirit, the power to, and the ability to do that. And that's what our lesson is about tonight. And there's, there's four different uh, points that he makes within that. And the first one is the, the creation or the, the birth of the church. It's like the, the church being created. Then you have number two is the growth of the church. 
And then number three, the, the persecution and the first Christian martyr. We know that to be Stephen. And then number four, the transition. And we see Paul uh, in that where he's getting into the missionary to the Gentiles. Also, he was known as the apostle Paul, the missionary to the Gentiles. So we see him and uh, really a really big transitional character that writes most of the New Testament. So it's, it's a really big thing to see him in that. But back up to page 135, uh, right here, um, uh, let's see, I guess it's the one, two, three, fourth paragraph. And um, he says, imagine yourself a living house, wrote C.S. Lewis. Now, who, who you remember C.S. Lewis? What did he write? You may remember. Like the lion. Yeah, that's it. The lion, witch, and wardrobe. Wrote, yeah, wardrobe. So he, uh, not to get into that movie and the series, but he was, I think he was attempting in those stories to show Jesus to the world in a different story format in a way, and you kind of can see it if you watch it and you know what to look for, but it's kind of a weird movie anyway. Uh, but anyway, uh, God comes in to rebuild that house. If we're that living house, and, and he's, he's technically correct because you get in the Psalms and the Proverbs and we are that house that's being built block by block, and, but the Holy Spirit is in us, but we learn upon precept upon precept or brick upon brick, and next thing you know, we are mature and that house is almost completed. It's never really 100% because God keeps on making additions and maybe he's, he's stretching you further out in that direction and it's not really, really completed until we go to be with him. But the way he comes out and says it, God comes into a person's life and to rebuild that house. At first, perhaps you can understand what he's doing. He's getting the drains right and stopping the leaks uh, but presently he starts knocking down, uh, knocking the house about in ways it hurts uh, abominably and does not seem to make any sense. In other words, that person will be going through trials and tribulations and things just don't make sense. But right at the beginning when salvation happens, he's fixing the emergency stuff. And that, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, trying to do a word picture. And then he gets a little further. Uh, you thought you were going to be made into a decent little cottage, but he's building a palace. Yeah, instead of just you being saved and that's it, he's like, no, nah, we're, we're gonna make your life something else. We're gonna make your house uh, really something to remember. And so that's God's working on us during this whole time. But in the message of the church, the gospel is carried to imperfect people by imperfect people. And um, we band together to grow spiritually in the salvation of Christ. So that, he, he uh, he kind of brings it around right there uh, for the opening um, part there. It's kind of interesting to see it like that. Uh, on the last part of that 135, we see the story of the New Testament in the era is the, is the church era. And um, no, I'm sorry, this one here is the gospel era. And then we have the figure is Jesus. And then Jesus comes in fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies of a Savior and offers salvation in the true kingdom of God. While some accept him, most reject him, and he is crucified, buried, and resurrected. So that's what we're, we was looking at last week there, and they just brought that to the front. But now we go on to the next page, and we'll see what the era is, the church era. Right there, you see right, right below number two where it says storyline summary. Um, we're in the church era. Peter, shortly after the ascension of Jesus, is used by God to establish the church, God's next major plan for man. And so that's where we're at today, too. Um, now, number three, the expansion is the kind of what we're, uh, maybe see some new things, a couple new things, maybe. There are four major subjects in the church era. We see the birth of the church or the creation of the church, the growth uh, of the church, which we still see growth today in different countries. Uh, we see the persecution in different countries, number three. And, but the transition, we see this uh, Paul in the uh, missionary to the Gentiles. So let's take a look at number one, the creation, birth of the church. When we look in Acts, and that's where we see Peter do the sermon, the 3,000 souls, and then you see uh, it's just an explosion of people um, learning about who Jesus is, and then the um, what was the 
I guess on the tip of my tongue, the first place where they were known as Christians, Antioch, right? And so we see that, and we see the persecution actually gets people moving further out. And so you kind of see hindsight 2020, why God allowed the persecution to happen. It's like, well, hey, if it wasn't for that, they wouldn't have got out of their comfort zone and, and went further. Because wherever they went, they were telling people about Jesus. So it kind of makes sense that he allowed that, right? Um, there, and I'm sure it's other reasons behind the God allowing that to happen, but we still see it today, the persecution of the church. Uh, now, go back to that 136 where we see the birth. Uh, his disciples wait in Jerusalem, the power of the Holy Spirit, and then we see in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. And when we see that, uh, they were to be witnesses. Jesus tells them the great commission. It's like, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. Let's get things going. Uh, but we also see it today as, as God telling us. It's like, well, hey, as a Christian, we're, we're supposed to do these things too. We're supposed to go and tell. Uh, then we also see um, right here in about the middle of the way, Jesus ascends into heaven right before their eyes. Shortly after that, on the Jewish feast day of Pentecost, that's when the Holy Spirit comes in. And then we see this, this great event uh, the day of Pentecost. And go to 137. Uh, one of the big things, um, and I believe it was also to add proof and uh, evidence of what God was doing, that even though they were from so many different languages, they could understand each other and they could understand Peter. And we see them speaking their own, own, their own language. This and other notable miracles associated with the birth of the church takes place in the early days. And you, you can see that. It's like if you were taking a class at a university and a guy gets up there and he starts talking about, say, physics, but yet he doesn't have any kind of background, no credentials or nothing, you're not really going to trust what he says, right? But if you got a guy up there that's uh, 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 from a different area, different language, and there's all kinds of other people and everybody understands them, and then it, it's like, man, the, the Holy Spirit is there, and they're doing miracles, and it's like there's the credential of who Peter says he was. You know? And so we see uh, the evidences and the need for these miraculous things at that time. And we see uh, the people there, especially the ones that gave their life to Christ uh, during that time of the book of Acts with Peter preaching. And it's like, well, man, how in the world did that? They were probably witnesses, too. They might have been some of the people that were in on the feeding of the 5,000. They might have seen some miracles that Jesus did, but yet wasn't quite ready. And then we see Peter give the message, and they're like, man, all this is, it's all adding up. That's Peter. I know who that guy is, or they, or somebody else knows. Uh, so we see an amazing thing happen at the birth there, just a real big, um, it's a real good start. Right, for the church, 3,000, that's a lot of people. Um, well, anyway, notable miracles. There's, they keep doing these different things, and uh, the evidence is there. They can't, it's irrefutable evidence of, of who they are and who Jesus is. It's like, who can do, who can raise people from the dead unless God is with them, right? And they witness Jesus doing those things. Now, go to number two, the uh, growth. The organization of the church, um, we see the, everything increasing in Acts chapter 6. And uh, then we see this particular thing that they're bringing their possessions to the leadership of the church. And um, we, we think about uh, Barnabas, right? Everybody remember Barnabas? He brought, brought his uh, land and said, hey, we know whatever you need. You guys take this and sell this and whatever. And then we had that couple, Ananias and Sapphire, that said, well, hey, let's, we like, man, he's getting all kinds of praise and glory for that. We want some of that. Well, that was in the wrong part. You know, they didn't humble themselves. They should have, and they wouldn't have wound up in trouble and dead. Uh, but we see that during the growth, there was a lot of needs during that time. And that's kind of reminiscent of what we, what we do today as we come together, and if there's any need, we try to meet those needs for the community, uh, for people in our church. You know, somebody passes away, we try to do something for the family. You know, the, the orphans or the children's village, we, you know, we try to meet those needs. Uh, the hearts and hands, you know, they've got that letter. 
uh, for them. So there, there is needs, even though we're living in a very wealthy country, there's still people that are poor that need help. Are there people that just have no way to go or they don't have a family like, like we do? So we, we still want to help them, and that's kind of what they were doing. All right, number three, we see the persecution, the first Christian martyr in Acts chapter 7, and we see Stephen uh, here, and he's martyred. And then we, we also see Saul, which later becomes Paul. He's on the scene at the time of the stoning, and this kicks off this, this round of persecution against the Christians, and everybody's starting to scatter, but as they do, then they bring the message of the gospel with them. And so anytime you know that happens, they try to stamp us, stamp the Christian voice out, all they're doing is making it go out stronger. And uh, you think about they're having some persecution over there in Myanmar. Remember, you've seen some of the videos and some of the texts from Brother Ken. And uh, if they continue persecuting them on there, it's going to backfire on them because the people that truly believe in Jesus are going to be telling it even more. Because when they know that, when they're like, hey, man, they could come in and arrest us tomorrow, so I better go on and make sure I tell everybody I know right now. And there's that, there's that fear about them, and they're like, well, we got to do this. you know. And I can see that here, too. Uh, no matter where they went, they were probably telling everybody about the Lord, uh, the message of the good news of the gospel in the surrounding areas of Judea and Samaria. Now, number four... We see the transition, and uh, at first Peter, you know, he's telling all uh, all the people there in the book of Acts, and then we see the, this chapter 8, going through 8 to 12, we see Saul, and Jesus calls him directly and converts him. It says Jesus changes Saul's name to Paul, and we could see that is, you say, well, why would you change somebody's name? You know, you think about it, when God called somebody, uh, like Abraham, right? Uh, his He changed his name to Abraham, right? It was Abram, and he changes it to Abraham, right? And then we see, um, who else do we see uh, name change back there? Jacob, right? Jacob. Yeah, he says he's going to be, when it was a big transition, he changed his name. So we see here, we take Saul, and he's like, look, you're going to do big things. I mean, maybe that's one reason, I don't know. He changes his name to Paul. Um, probably to help smooth things over with the church because he was persecuting the church. They didn't. They were kind of scared of him at first, and they had to uh, send that one guy a, a dream about him and say, "Hey, you got to welcome him in," and he welcomes him in. Um, anyway, he uh, he's known to be the apostle Paul, and he's a missionary to the Gentiles. We know he goes on three different trips and winds up uh, being executed in Rome. Right? Is everybody from Rome? Uh, right in there. And so we see uh, it takes a while, but uh, God finally ends his missionary work right there. Um, but we still got, we still have the, the word that he was telling the people and all the actions and stuff. So, we, I mean, it's, you know, they didn't do away with that. You know, they might have put him out of commission, but, you know, they uh, didn't take the word. God didn't allow that. All right, now let's go to page 138, and we see the four major subjects. And so which one was creation in the description? You say that on birth page? Birth of the church. All right, birth of the church. Growth. Organization. Of Organ the yeah, organization. And then we see the persecution. The first Christian. The first Christian, Stephen. And then the transition. Missionary to the Paul, missionary to the All right, now look over. Uh, this is something interesting, too. Look over on page 139, that map. All right, so here we are again, but it's the beginning of the church area, and guess where it's taking place? Jerusalem, All right? Then we see Samaria and Judea, all around the same area that we've been in for the past 4,000 years before this has taken place. Very critical area. So I wonder, you know, we, we see through re the revelations, we see different things um, that are in that area in Revelation. And so he, he began everything in that area, and he's going to wrap things up in that area. And the whole world can look to that area for all these things to take place. Isn't that something? And so all, what, what a... Um, 
a, a great place to take everything is Jerusalem. And he's like, you know, he had to pick somewhere, right? And he's like, well, this is going to be the spot. He had to pick somebody to start up his nation of the Jews. And then he, he's like, man, I kind of like this guy, Abraham. That's the guy. And then we have Jesus. We've got all these different characters, Moses and different ones that made these great impacts. But God was leading them the whole way. Uh, it, it makes us think, you know, what's God, what's God got for us? You know, and it, it takes everybody um, to be following him. Just think about it if, you know, you have Moses there and all the other people say, yeah, we're not going. You know, we're, we're going to stay back. And it just been Moses out there. That, no, everybody was ready to go because all the trouble and stuff that they had been going through and they were tired of being slaves and they were tired of living like that. And uh, they were ready, and they needed that leader. And God said, well, yeah, this is going to be the guy right here. And he brought him up through the ranks. Uh, what a great leader. But we, we see Paul kind of the same way. He, he went through all that training. He, went, he was a, a Pharisee of Pharisees, a guy super smart. In the Old Testament scripture, he knew it backwards and forwards. He was zealous about God and wanted to follow after God to the point of persecuting the Christians. And then the Lord came to him and said, hey, you know, you, you, you're making a mistake. And he straightened him up and he, and he come after him. What, what better guy that you could pick than somebody that knew the Old Testament like Paul? And so we see the Lord change him and move him that direction, and it was a good thing. All right, anyway, uh, that's going to wrap us up for tonight. And then next week we're going to be looking at the missions era, Acts chapter 13 to 28. Anybody got any questions for me? Anybody? No. All right, Brother Tom, you want to close for us? Father, again, we want to thank you for your love and mercy. Lord, how good you are to